So the U.S. has seen roughly 5 million jobs lost due to either direct outsourcing or displacement by imports under trade deals like NAFTA and the WTO. More and more jobs lost every week. Uh, this obviously has a huge impact on the families that are directly affected, uh, but it also has big impacts on, on the wider community in ways that aren't often acknowledged. You know, so the, la the loss of middle class jobs means less money to, for people to spend at local businesses from restaurants to hair salons to car dealerships. Uh, the loss of middle class jobs also means a smaller tax base for our schools, our fire departments, other public services. Uh, this is especially true in rural areas where a single plant closure can have a major impact on the community's overall tax revenue. And if those things weren't bad enough, even worse, all this outsourcing is putting a very real downward pressure on the wages and the benefits of the jobs that are left. Uh, one study estimates that the downward pressure on wages and benefits caused by outsourcing costs the majority of American workers 5.5% of their income every year. And that's even after the benefit of you know, lower cost TV sets and, and tube socks and other imported sweatshop goods is factored in. So you know, for the average American household, 5.5% of your income is almost $3,500 out of your pockets each and every year. You, know, you extend that over a decade, that's an estimated you know, 35 grand less in your family's bank account. And so maybe you've heard the statistic about how roughly 40% of Americans don't have $400 saved up for an emergency. Um, you know, I'm sure whether you've heard it or not, many of the people here are in a situation where you've run through whatever savings you had just trying to survive this plague. Well, you know, imagine if your household had an extra $3,500 in your pocket this year and last year and the year before that and the year before that. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be living large but you'd probably be able to weather the storm a little bit better anyhow. Uh, and so when we talk about building resilience into our economy moving forward, you know, yes, we need more resilient supply chains for PPE and medical equipment. And yes, we absolutely need to cooperate globally when it comes to creating and distributing new medicines and vaccines. But we also need resiliency when it comes to individuals' livelihoods. You know, no more race to the bottom trade agreements that pit workers in one country against workers in another to see who can make things for the absolute lowest price and the absolute worst conditions. You know, we need strong enforced labor and environmental standards, we need high wage standards, and we need a social safety net. You know, and that's gotta be part of how we rewrite our trade rules for a more resilient global economy moving forward. And just the last thing I'll say very quickly, um, which I think is important in this, you know, this era of phony America first rhetoric from our political leaders, uh, working people in Mexico and in China and in other countries are not our enemies here. Um, I, I would argue they shouldn't even be viewed as our competitors. They are not the problem. The problem is that our own elected officials and policymakers uh, keep prioritizing the demands of greedy co uh, corporations over prioritizing the needs of working families. And as a result, working people in every country have been on the losing end and have had less uh, resources to weather storms like COVID-19. Uh, and the alternative to this isn't more rhetoric pitting worker against worker. It's trade deals that actually put people on the planet first across borders. Well, let me let me turn.